<laughs> I have a whole theory that mankind went completely bonkers with the invention of photography. That when you could actually see the most accurate representation of yourself, mm -hmm. that drove people crazy. That before that, uh, there was a way you could still, I don't know, you have an uh, ideal just self. to the, literally the be able to see yeah. yourself. Yes, yeah, you could right. idealize things, yeah. you could do all kinds of manipulate it in a way. Now you can, now of course you can manipulate it again. And you yeah. could then too, but it's like, and it wasn't, it's never inaccurate. It's never going to be a completely no. accurate representation no. of you. But I do think that that drove people crazy. So I'm always curious, what the fuck it must have been like to be an actor before film and photography? I mean, it must have been really freaky to people. Yeah. If you came out and you played the devil in the Middle Ages, people must have been like, oh, fuck that guy. That he's the, he's the, that yeah. guy's the devil. fucking devil. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that motherfucker's <laughs> actually the devil. Well, also, you know? I think up until the early 1900s, acting was looked upon as a very low... Profession yes. was not plumbing or something. In the, it, was, yeah. it was literally no plumbers were like a were like up, yeah. that guy has a trade. <laughs> this guy puts on dead people's hair and makeup <laughs> and runs around on stage and says he's Julius Caesar. <laughs> fucking nuts. <laughs> Okay, everybody, welcome back to Chinwag. I am Stephen Asma, one of your hosts, and this is the lovely and talented. Lovely, talented. Yeah. Wow, that's really nice. Nobody's ever really used the word lovely for me before. It's I'm a moved. first. Yes. It's a bromance. What can I say? <laughs> no, that's a, it really kind of is, actually. It's amazing. <laughs> uh, yes, I am Paul Giamatti. I am, uh, I am also your host. Uh, we are co-hosts here at Chinwag, and welcome, uh, Loyal listeners, how's your uh, what, what, how's your summer going, Steve? How's things it's going good. out there? Uh, yeah? I am basically here. We are right around the Fourth of July, and I will uh -huh. be playing a gig. I'll be playing some music, some blues music, out at an outdoor little festival. So that's really? going to be fun. Yeah, wow, yeah. that's hey, fantastic. Hey, people don't don't know that when you and I do live events, mm -hmm. you play the theremin and I play the guitar. It's a well, concert, people. You play the guitar and I dick around with the theremin, having no idea what the hell I'm doing. No, no Still idea. sounds good, man. So that's awesome. What are you going to be doing that? I mean, get the thing a plug for crying out loud. Well, it's kind of a private function ah, in Chicago. It's an outdoor party, so I'm not I plugging see. it just so much as <laughs> you just don't want everybody. Yeah, you don't right. want everybody who listens to Chinwag showing up with a private <laughs> <That's right>. party <laughs> and demanding to talk about Bigfoot. That would not be. That would not be good. What are you going to be doing? I don't know. You know, I would love to get a hold of some fireworks, but it's hard in, in New York City to get a hold of fireworks. It's hard in general. Well, you can still get them in Wisconsin. You go over the border and they'll yeah. just sell you any damn thing you want. It's chaos. Yeah, there's definitely yeah. states. I mean, I, I, when I lived out in Seattle, it was great. You could go and... You could go out and get fireworks. So speaking of Fourth of July, we 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 are taking the week mm. off. We're relaxing, and as such, we're gonna yes, technically we're gonna rebroadcast an a, an episode from earlier in our in our epic run of this show. And it was uh, live. It uh, was a. It was. It was. Uh, yeah. Well, no, we were sitting well, in the same guess, room with him. Yeah, I guess that's, in that so sense, it was, it was live. live. <laughs> it was live in so far as he was alive in the room with us. We were at South by Southwest. We that's were at South by uh, Southwest. Let me yeah, no, no. myself. <laughs> and and we were in a room with Pat Oswalt, yeah. and it, as opposed to having to be in the Zoom thing where we're not actually with people, he was in the flesh. Pat Oswalt, the man himself, was there, and we had a dandy time with him. Yeah, he is like, hilarious and a yeah. great improviser, a very funny guy, super very, smart. Very, very smart guy and so we thought we would rebroadcast because it was a fun show and maybe people missed it the first time around and we we got onto a lot of uh weird stuff and clue i mean the, the whole subject was the mandela effect that's right the mandela effect yes uh, which uh you'll hear some of you will know about it already but we do a very clear unpacking and analysis of the mandela yes. effect as well as talking about a lot of other things we get onto uh, yeah. we get into scientology we even talk about shakespeare very, oh, yeah. very highbrow conversation about Shakespeare, <laughs> spy balloons, horror movies, shit like that. Uh, I, I will say that uh, uh, tease you with this, that uh, after you listen to the episode, we had a, uh, a note from a listener that we would like to uh, share with you uh, say, uh, claiming to have an explanation for the Mandela effect. For the so Mandela stick, effect. Stick around for that yeah. uh, after, after we uh, listen to this wonderful show. And as always... Journey over to uh, 
Apple Podcasts and give us ratings. Give us reviews. Yeah, we love it when people be- yep. leave comments, uh, preferably positive, <laughs> supportive <laughs> comments, but we'll take anything. Yeah, and uh, also give us five stars if you can or whatever, you know, give mm-hmm. us some feedback. It really, uh, it helps us and we really enjoy getting yeah, it. Yeah, we do enjoy getting it, actually. So without further ado, this is a replay of... Uh, Classic, classic Chinwag episode. <laughs> classic, from the from, early days. From the early days, a couple of months back, with Pat Oswalt at South by Southwest, in the room with us, live. <laughs> live, in the room. In the room. Yes. Hello, uh, welcome to the Chinwag Podcast. We're broadcasting live from the South by South. We're not live. What am I talking about? <laughs> but we're at the South by Southwest Film Festival in Austin, Texas, with our special guest, Mr. Patton Oswalt. Thank you so much. And you are also here in promotion for your uh, 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 current uh, television project, yes. uh, Shattered Belts. Uh, well, close. Okay. Was, no, no, you know what? I want to okay. call it Shattered Belts. That's listen. awesome. No, no, it's listen. Sh- <laughs> listen. <laughs> Listen, just another detour. We're here with George Lucas talking about his movie Space Battles, which I understand. Um, no, what we are it doing. Called? Scattered it's called, belt. It's called Shatter Belt. Oh, the Shatter Belt. Shatter Belt. Shatter, um, the Shattered Belt. Yeah, Shattered Belts was the working title for the whale. So um, the uh, what did I? I'm sorry. Um, so we're. Uh, it's me. Uh, it's this guy James Ward Burkett Thank who you. made an amazing film called Coherence. Now he's doing these short. Um, episodic things called Chatterbelt. Uh, we're showing three of them, and oh my God, one of them absolutely uh, nails what we have been talking about. Why don't you, you yeah, define the, it for us? The Mandela effect is this uh, weird phenomenon, and it start started with um, uh, where where a, the mass of people believe something that isn't true, and everyone just assumes it to be true, and then people start questioning. Which one is the true thing? The, 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 People it discover being, they've misremembered something. Yes, kind exactly. Of in mass, like it, in mass of, it is a you're right, it's a it's a mass. That's the thing. That's the weird thing about yeah. it to me. And and so it's it's named after Nelson Mandela, where people, <laughs> assu- well, he died ten years ago. You know, right. Long before he died, people just assumed he had died. Um, so there was that, and and now that has gone uh, in, in weird trivial areas where. Uh, was it the Baron Stein Bears or yes, the Baron Stein, Stein Bears? Bears? Yeah. Did the Monopoly guy have a monocle or <laughs> yeah, not? Did, yeah. th- so there's all these weird. Yeah. I've misremembered things. Yes. But it, the, 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 did the raisin brand guy have sunglasses on? It? Right. Yes. Yeah. And is that yeah. that one is real because it's it's clearly he had sunglasses on, but but I'm wrong about that. <laughs> well, right? but see, not now, in my universe. You're right. in a different multiverse than I am. I, I, yeah. See, but that's the whole. Is it a multiverse? But uh, first of all, I want to know if Abe Vigoda was pissed off. It wasn't the Abe Vigoda. <laughs> right. Film. Well, he was. Why? That because everybody thought that guy was dead for decades. Although you before, know. You know yeah. why he probably didn't get it named for him? Because too many comedians used that as a, as ah. a hacky punchline. <laughs> so then they okay. Is that what like, you're saying? I just brought that in as a hacky no, punchline? No, no. I'm just saying they wanted it to seem like it was very important. Well, we, yes. we can't use yes, Magoda. Yes, we gotta use true. Mandela. That's Please. true. That's true. Then it quickly descended to them. Did the Monopoly guy have a monocle? Was yeah. hang on, was it Sinbad or Shaq that was in Kazam? Well, that's really that one's that's actually one very them, right? bizarre. <laughs> very and that's bizarre. actually the one that's the most kind of disturbing. And what is that? Because Sinbad, he was not in a movie or right. something. They think what people is that think one? he was in a Shazam movie. No, no. Yeah. was that Kazam? <laughs> okay, it's called Kazam. And it's about a genie, and everyone thought, yeah, Sinbad played Kazam, but it was Shaq. But then people, again, now, especially because you can deep fake anything, yeah. people were making fake posters that looked very real. Right. So then you, everyone's oh. just constantly de- oh. We We seem to be moving into an era of, um, it's like a cafeteria-style reality <laughs> where you can just pick yeah. the elements of the reality you'd like to live yep. in. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, we're obviously seeing this in, on, on huge political levels, but, but it yeah. also, I think, goes down to these weird... Granular Personal levels, levels like this, but I don't understand how it becomes a mass thing. And is it the mass thing? It, that's what's weird. Like that whole idea of like a kind of. I mean, isn't that what a meme originally was? Yeah. Isn't that a, the yeah. original definition yeah, the, of a the, meme? Richard Dawkins had this idea. Like you have a gene that spreads through the population. The meme originally was like a cultural gene, like an mm-hmm. idea, right? And then it becomes like a virus, and it spreads through the whole population. So you think he said. 
Luke, I am your father. And in fact, what he said is, no, I think he said, no, no I am your I father. Am your father. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, and then, yeah. but then it's contagious. Like the, it spreads through the whole population somehow. Yeah. I mean, with, like you said, with deep fakes, it, it's obvious. But before all that stuff, how did it spread? <clears throat> it, sometimes it feels like if something reads better in uh -huh. someone's mind, like for instance, they never say the line, play it again, Sam, in oh, Castle Blanca. That's right, yeah. But, oh, doesn't it's it feel line. like they should have <laughs> yeah, said yeah. that at yeah. one point? It's that's, a better line. Exactly, and and Sherlock Holmes never says elementary, my dear Watson, right. in really? any of the stories. Yeah. But God, what a great line. Yeah. Shouldn't yeah. he have said that? <laughs> um, so you, it's, it's like you want people to have, that's why there's so many um, great quips that are attributed to people who never said them because right. That just sounds great coming out of that person's mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That person should have said it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God That's damn it. Interesting. They, but so yeah. But, so but forcing reality to shift like that. But what I'm wondering now, at this late stage, 2023, that people are very aware of memes and very aware of the yeah. Mandela effect. Are there going to be people that are? Are there now people that are studying? Well, can we control this force and start using it yeah. sure. for our own gain? Because it, it's been around long sure. enough. Can we to start... convince people that things were different? Yeah, well, I, I mean they're already I, doing that. I mean, in a sense, well, haven't people been doing that? Yeah, for, I mean, isn't that like <laughs> yeah. isn't that the discipline of history and stuff yes. like that? I mean, kind of has been done. In right, a lot but of ways. but this is now it's accelerated, only because now everything is filmed. Right. There's no such thing as oh. We found some foot. Oh. No, everything that like, like again, the the Kennedy assassination. There'd be a million cell phone. You yeah, know, right. We know we yeah. even see every angle of that. So then you'd have to convince people. Well, what angle is worth looking right. at? Right. Which one is the right? You, one? you know, you can show people video, but now everyone we've had implanted in our brains the idea of when we're shown a video of something happening. Is, Let me just hang on and see. Right. Like we don't accept what we look at yeah. in front of our eyes now. Well, which we is, can't. We, we shouldn't. Yeah, no, we shouldn't. no, but, we shouldn't. But that level of doubt is is going to become pathological in a way that's yes. probably destructive. Yeah, or or people just like saying something and it's on camera and then they just go, but I didn't say that. And if they <laughs> say that with enough confidence, people yes. go, did he say that? <laughs> that's or right, me? yeah. You know, yeah. It just, it's going to be very weird. I just wonder what the positive, and I, I forgot who said this about technology, but uh, technology is an ax. You can use an ax. Uh, to cut wood, to, to build a fire and, yeah. and warm yourself. You can also drop an ax and cut your foot off. Oh, oh my God. God. You can also murder someone with it. So every technology has well, the benefits, the accident, and then the evil use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what are the three things going to be with who wants to tweak reality immediately? Yeah. You know? What's the good aspect of that I don't know. Right. But the only, what, what are the possible, there, there don't seem to be any except giving you pleasure of some kind. And you know what I mean? Yes. But that seems to be the only thing is kind of, which just further deludes you and makes you easier to like manipulate. <laughs> to it. manipulate, yeah. So yeah. it's like, because I don't know what other positive, what positive benefit is there really of being able to be like, Oh, I can fake this or that. You could have like your historic heroes, and you could have them like engage in very a rap battle. Have George Washington do a rap battle. Well, sure. With Tupac well, yeah, and I mean you could. <laughs> in a but, but that's all just a kind of like yeah, distraction. pleasurable distraction yeah. thing. So I don't know that I can see anything positive about any of yeah, this stuff. Yeah, and especially if the person manipulating it knows there's that unspoken what you just said. I just want some pleasure. Okay. I'm going to give you some pleasure, and the cost of it is you're going to have to accept this lie. Yeah. But it'll be a pleasurable lie, uh -huh. and you'll yeah. but you'll accept it, and that's the unspoken bargain yeah. we have right now. Yeah, which is really creepy. Really that's creepy. The Matrix thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look. There, and I've argued this too. There are people. You could argue that. Um, wait a minute. So in the Matrix. We live in these goo pods, and yeah. we're hairless and, and have no muscles, <laughs> yeah. and they pipe this... Which is true with me, by the way. <laughs> that's how I, that's actually how I live. Yeah, you, <laughs> no, oh, you, actually, so you're one of the elite that has the goo pod to yes, sleep in? I have the horsehair goo the, pod. Oh, I have my the Swedish God. horsehair goo pod. There we go. That's right. Right. That's fine. Fine. There's the it's elite right, right there. Swedish horsehair, my goo pod. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm, I'm ahead of the game. Um, <laughs> uh, sorry. No, no, just really quick, though. But in that world... I've. Okay, so you live in a goo pod yeah. and they pipe a reality into your head where you're living in this world. But then they, they wake you up from the goo pods to live in reality, which is this radioactive yeah. wasteland of slag and yeah. wreckage and you're naked and screaming. It's like, well, 
<laughs> we destroyed the world, and the computers were like, the best we can do for you guys <laughs> just give you is just song. put you in Virtual these goose I'm yeah. sorry, you wrecked it. Yeah. We didn't do this. Right, right. So there's an argument to, like, maybe put me back in the goop. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're no, no, there, no, 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 no. We're already in our basements uh, streaming yes. you know, our shows nonstop while the world goes to hell. Much better to, to be in that situation, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Yeah, well, that is all that, like, simulation, we live in a simulation thing, mm -hmm. which is all mm -hmm. sort of... And, I mean, how, the Mandela Effect thing, is there a multiverse explanation from the Mandela Effect that it, that it goes beyond this? Technology aside, we're actually, like toggling back and forth between two realities accidentally. Yeah. Is that a theory too? Yeah, that's a theory that we've now, especially with the microchip and being able to store so much information in our reality, it has created these ruptures where we can go, like you said, we can go back and forth and the toggle is a random switch being thrown. So one day it's the Berenstain Bears and one day it's right. the Berenstain Bears. Right. And you well, just so got to back and forth. It goes back and forth. <clears throat> and we don't control it anymore, but someone's trying to control it. But somehow we've become aware of it. We somehow become, we've become aware of it. We're aware of it, but we're aware of it on an animal level. We can't control it yet. Like we must have been, uh -huh. we must have been like on an animal level aware of electricity, but it took centuries to learn to control it and use it. It was there, someone had to pull it out of the sky uh -huh, and start uh -huh, using it. Uh -huh. So the the multiverse is there, no one's just pulled it out of the sky and either weaponized it right. or domesticated it yet. So some people, my students uh, think that the, the CERN uh, super collider yeah. might be involved as triggering the yeah. multiverse splitting or oh, something. Oh really, yeah. because mm -hmm. it's like yeah. it created like a mini black hole something, or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so some, some kind of fissure that. between the two. Well that universes. thing is suspect. I mean, you know, that, that thing sounds really <laughs> sketchy. Yeah. I'm like, well, and plus the fact the whole thing broke down because the guy left like a battery out I, in the oh, rain. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Didn't, he? didn't like I a mean, light bulb burst? So, yeah. Literally, no, some guy yeah. literally was like, oh shit, I le little, literally left some batteries in the rain. And they were like, eh, yeah. gotta shut the thing down for a little while and I get was, some fresh batteries. I, I was, was like, you gotta be kidding I was me. using it to charge my phone. <laughs> exactly. Oh my God. Well, that's interesting. The simulation thing, though, is, I mean, I, I'm not to, I, I guess it is still basically a Mandela effect idea. Yeah. I don't know that I totally get the simulation thing. It's that somebody in the future has created this game that we're in. Right. And, or this simulation that we are in. And, but it's somebody completely separate. They're, they're like, on, who knows what they are or where they are. Or they're in our future. Or how far ahead the future yeah. is, right. Right. Yeah. We would catch up with their future at some point, or like, or You're looking at me matter. like I fucking know yeah. what it is. <laughs> Listen, you're the philosopher. I, you're, no, I just figure, I figure one of you guys has to have the answer to this. What else are we doing well, here? Well, there's another thing. Where the hell did I read this? But I kind of like it just for the science fiction aspects of it that the Bible isn't actually an ancient text. Right. It is a future uh, cheat code, oh. and it's, but it's written <laughs> symbolically. Um, it, it, it's, it's a symbolic representation oh, of our own consciousness. Oh, wow. Christ is the one that we have to free. Oh. And that, you know, that, so, but it's, it's a wow, future cheat. Wow, I've never heard that. Yeah. That's really it's cool. It's a future cheat code for escaping this Holy simulation. Shit. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. the Talmudic so that's, stuff. That's super the, the Jewish interesting. Scholar. Right. I've never yeah. heard that. Yeah, and there's a, there's a um, uh, uh, that, that film Noah, um, I, there's, there's <laughs> really, a weird that's thing. where we're gonna <laughs> well, go. Well, <laughs> there is. If you watch the film Noah, um, the um, Darren Aronofsky Noah. Yes. There are. If you watch it closely, it's so clear that it's actually taking place in a far off post-apocalyptic future. future, not during biblical times. Oh, that makes that, it much more interesting. Exactly. That, that this is a weird and cyclical story that keeps getting told. That's intentional. It's and very intentional. Be. Yeah. If you watch it, you're like. Oh wait, this is a post-apocalypse. Oh, that's really cool. This is, wow. We are so far into the future now that it looks like it. We've so wiped everything out that it looks like biblical times. No shit. It looks ancient. I didn't yeah. See that again. We'll be right back after this important word from our sponsor. And we're back with more chinwag. Okay, here's another weird Please. alley to go down, but um. <laughs> I was, I'm going to, this is a bit of a brag, I'm going to drop a name. Uh-oh. Uh, I was, I was, I became friends with Harlan Ellison. Oh, wow. Yeah, awesome. before he, like, the that's last, amazing. The last yeah. 10 years of his life. That's, a, br really that's a good, good name. That is, that's a good name. Yes, it is. Well, Harlan, here's, talk about living in a weird reality. In the, <laughs> in the, in the late 50s, uh -huh. Harlan was a struggling pulp writer, yep. living in a hotel in Times Square, 
and his hallmate was L. Ron Hubbard. Jeez. Really? L. Ron Hubbard, he goes, was the nicest guy you'd ever met. Yeah. We were cranking out whatever would, uh, we'd write a porno, a Western, he, we would just, wow. and then we'd take our um, voucher down to Ziff Publications and get our thirty dollars. <laughs> Amazing! You get a penny per word. Literally, it was yeah. it was literally yeah. write a three thousand word story. Thirty Amazing. bucks. Amazing. Two bucks Amazing. pays my rent. Amazing. Uh, Fifty oh cents gets me God. a spaghetti Just dinner. <laughs> and, exactly. and down the hall, here's L. And L. Ron would gobble bottles of, of amphetamines uh -huh. and could write Just a novel in a night. Out. He could bang oh, yeah. on a novel. Yeah. Harlan could write a story, and um, and he goes and L. Ron was. Perfectly average. A couple of things you wrote were actually pretty we're actually good. Actually, pretty a good. Lot of, yeah. The slaves of sleep and fear is amazing. Uh, well, there, there, yeah. There's another one. Fear, but there's another one I just read. It's, it's like the template for all the post-apocalyptic things. Yeah. What the fuck is it called? I can't remember. He also wrote one called <laughs> Typewriter in the Sky, uh -huh. where a guy is living this shitty life, and what he realizes is this pulp writer is sitting in his bathroom and is writing the guy's life right. and is making the guy's life. He, he, he so kind of said, awesome. like, he, said right. he said a lot of tropes up he for did, them, yeah. which is actually something people don't credit him with. Right, but he was also just a workhorse and didn't care yeah. either way. Just, uh, sure, what do they want? Yeah. They want a porno guy? Yeah, 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 there yeah, you yeah, go. Yeah. Um, and Harlan's wow. like, now I live in a, now fast forward to 50 years, I'm on, I live on a planet where this hallmate of mine, yeah. who was a perfectly average writer, now commands a yeah. zombie oh, army yeah. who will do whatever he wants. Like, sure. that reality is... That's so, debatable, of course. Well, that is debatable. <laughs> right, exactly. It's very debatable. That versions. reality oh, okay. seems <laughs> impossible. That <laughs> seems... <laughs> no, that, talk about something that seems multiversical or, you know, that yeah. seems crazy. Exactly. How did that happen? Right. Well... I mean, it's a whole other can of worms. <laughs> We've opened up a whole well, other what, area but did he, of inquiry. Did Harlan Ellison feel like, uh, like, basically, reality had lost its moorings, and or it, sometimes shit gets out of hand. Okay. Somebody yes. starts something, and then they you get that moment. There's moments um, in a hard day's night where the Beatles are doing their concert, and John and Paul look over at each other, and they just start laughing. Oh, well, They're like. We were just playing in strip clubs. Yeah, all those, yeah, yeah. All those and we're Dylan literally documentaries. Changing, like, yeah, what the yeah. fuck well, is that, like? Don't look back in those. Dylan oh, when when that guy yells like, out shit. Judas, and he's like, yeah. what? The just whole thing happened. just goes off the rails. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, well, for sure. And I mean, this the whole legend that L. Ron Hubbard started. Well, I, I think initially there was an impulse. There was an actual impulse to like create a kind of. Uh, he he had some big beef with psychoanalysis. Oh yeah, and yeah. so the idea was, was to create. Yeah. I mean, it's basically. I read Dianetics. Well, so did I. Let me let me, <laughs> let, me, let, me, let, me <laughs> let me amend that. I read part of Dianetics. <laughs> Actually, last year I just was like, I should read this because of a thing I was doing. I thought I should take a look, and I read the Fountainhead too, which I I've read, read the because, goddamn yeah. Fountainhead. So I was like, nah, and listen, fucking roar, <laughs> way better than as any fucking, way more entertaining <laughs> than it has any right to fucking be. I know. I mean, it really. Was way more Martin pulpy and crazy. Pig. It's the worst written entertaining book it's I've so ever read. It's so fucking entertaining. I'm yeah. like, no wonder. And I'm glad I didn't read this when I was 16. Because <laughs> who knows where we'd all be sitting right now. I, got, I mean, I would have probably driven me out of my mind yeah, for sure. Exactly. But I was actually, and I was like, this is basically. It's basically psychoanalysis with just different jargon. Yeah, yeah. the it's engrams. Just, it's all about, yeah, yeah it's yeah. exactly the same thing. And I mean, I don't, I think there was an, an impulse somewhere in there to do something uh, positive. <laughs> it, and, I'm and sure it started that way, you know. and then it went, I mean, we get a lot of things started off with, okay, we want to do something helpful here, and then it just gets out of people's hands. Yeah, people and they, know, so. And that happens too. And, and that could also be, again, the Mandela effect and the uh -huh. simulation, they're, they're, they are also very, very comforting because yes. what they what it says is it's not your fault. This is, this well, is always out of your hands. Yes. You're not the one who fucked anything up. Well, that's conspiratorial you know. thinking well, in general. That's it? why I mean, it's the, like the, it, it comforts you. But you can't. 9 11, can, the very comforting because someone's in control. Yeah. yeah. No, there's yeah. Even if it's evil, there's, there's a plan. There. I don't yeah. think in Mandela effect, it, it's, weir it's weirder though because it's like no one's in control. You're just glitching between universes. Mm -hmm. But it is like. Uh, alternative history. Well, that's what I was saying. The man, my whole life feels like a, like an example of the Mandela effect. <laughs> what if I'm I like, had only? Wait a second. I was young. I was handsome. People thought very highly of me. 
What happened? This well, is impossible. I could be Paul <laughs> John Wick Giamatti yes, right exactly. now. And, I don't know, where did this, what happened? Fuck where this Indie Darling shit. Rails? Where's <laughs> my <laughs> goddamn franchise? <laughs> what the fuck happened? I could have sworn. No, but it, it does have that feeling. It does have that. Like, here's something interesting about L. Ron Hubbard that I was, I hadn't really ever watched him very much. Mm -hmm. And so I spent a lot of time watching him because, again, it was just something, it was a job I had. And I thought, I'm going to watch him. And it's rem remarkable how... Well, I suppose I suppose it would be different if you're actually in the room with the guy because right. the kind of animal magnetism and animal energy of him must have been different. Yeah. Because you watch him and think he seems like the goofiest guy yeah. I've ever seen, and it's and you cannot believe yeah. that people and that's a whole other. Well, Trump has that effect on people too. Mm -hmm. You're like, are people in? How come they're taking this seriously? And other people are like, this is amazing. Well, that's a whole. Guys. I yeah. mean, that whole notion of that kind of Charisma. personal magnetism and yeah. charisma yeah. is really well, puzzling and. Interesting. Yeah. And also, he is a living example of the Mandela effect put to evil use, where he will <laughs> literally well, sure. say, say sure. to your face, and it wouldn't work if he wasn't absolutely narcissistic. In other words, you other people are going to try to run yeah. the Trump wow. playbook, and they're going to crash and burn. Right. He is, however much you don't like him, yeah. he is a thousand percent convinced of what yes. he's saying. No, and that's necessary. And yeah. in any second, he can say one thing, and then in another second, when he I says the opposite thing, he's just as convinced yeah, of the and opposite. Mid -sentence. <laughs> and he has no problem. <laughs> and, and there is a thing that kind of puts people back on their heels when they encounter that. Yes. Because, I mean, you and I, the yeah. three, we're just like, I mean, I guess, I don't know, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Filled with self-doubt. Yeah, 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 nothing, but oh, yeah, God, no, I, Nothing's I, terribly convincing. I don't know. <laughs> I know. I, I'm not sure. I mean, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah I don't yeah. want yeah, to upset anybody <laughs> by saying this. So I'm You're constantly, probably, look, I'm sure I'm 100% full of shit here, but listen. I'm always I, qualifying what I say. <laughs> no, but, it's, but, but, that's a, but that's a kind of, I mean, that's the, that's the necessary ingredient of a oh. good con artist. It's like you, you have to actually buy it to some extent you yourself. You give people confidence. You yeah. give them your confidence exactly. too. But does he have a moment? You're not just like, taking theirs, like you're giving bed? them yours. Is he like, in, at, at night, is he like, wow, I'm really hoaxing these people? Or he doesn't even have no, that I don't know, moment. I, I don't know I, that I know a good is, con artist okay. like that actually right. thinks that way. I think a lot of people like to imagine that, oh, He'll end up. He'll have that moment in the Grifters that J.T. Walsh has, where he just <laughs> comes apart in bed. Right. Remember, he just goes, "I can't move." Right? And I'm like, right. "No, you, no. you're going to have to deal with the fact that I when Donald think... Trump's head hits the pillow, he gets ten <laughs> hours of healthy rest." Yes, sleep. I don't think that guys yeah. like that have those moments. Where Whereas I wake right. up eight times a night. Yes, yeah. I cut that person off. I yes, what the fuck right. did yeah. I do that? That was really horrible. I, Why did... was that a rush for God totally. Damn it! Like, Why didn't I just say yeah. happy birthday to the guy? <laughs> really? Why? What's wrong with me? I could have just given him that. Now, yeah. that kind of thing is Well, the philosopher Bertrand Russell said that ah. the, the shame of life is that the smartest people are the ones that have the least amount of confidence. Yep. Well, it's, yep. that, it's that Yates thing, the best like all conviction. Yes. Oh, like, yeah, man. Which is, which is sadly, sadly. Are we, are, yeah, are we literally, <laughs> are we fucking literally having to live through that poem? Because every... David, turning and turning. But, this, one, is okay, not, but this, this is my, I mean, there are definitely things that are more menacing than they probably were in the past, but right. I, I doubt that there was ever this whole idea that at one time it was better. I just don't think it was. No. Because it's like, all right, well, no. the Greeks, it was no, a gold Roman age. Empire I'm like, for Christ's sake, yeah. if there's, there's, there's a war on, it's yeah. just going to go right through your fucking farm yeah. and like, you know, I mean, you have no idea it's coming. I, I forgot, it's, it was either Hesiod or Horace were the one, ah. he made up the golden age. Yes. And oh. he was, he was like, he made that up during Roman times saying, this sucks. <laughs> yes. We, yes. We could just go back to yes. this. And, and Socrates thought that um, writing would ruin mankind. Right. He's like, we're going to lose right. our oral tradition. Totally. Right. And people are going to outsource their intelligence. This is the downfall no, of and, mankind. And, and, and Plato, Plato thought that poetry and theater and all this imaginative writing was what we were just talking about, yeah. going to delude people <laughs> yeah, corrupt and the make people more easily manipulated. <laughs> that was by his the TikTok. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, it was. These fucking Plato's teams TikTok. with their tragic Good Lord, plays. these fucking plays everybody's oh. going to. All the teams, <laughs> Megan, Glaminestra, and Medea, and Blah, Blah, Blah. Dad, pulling my, eye, pulling my eyes out. <laughs> yeah, I can't take it anymore. I slept with my mother. Oh, God. <laughs> it's, it's horrible. My life is going down the tubes. But, it, yeah, no, it's definitely. Kids, <laughs> kids don't want to see you recite the entire history of the Peloponnesian War. Yeah, they no. want to go to an amphitheater and watch these idiots with masks, and it's all written down for them. People are morons. It must have been though much more. I have a whole theory. 
I'm always curious. Sorry, this is a whole a whole detour I'm taking. Right I know. Now. Oh, go for I'm, it. By the way, <laughs> yeah. this has been nothing but detour. <laughs> yeah, that's what you we, all, We've man. never been on a fucking road. <laughs> that's the, the tune way. No, this detour. is the problem. <laughs> yeah. It's just a fucking stream of consciousness. This is the idea, by the no, way. But this is what you doing get. It. This yeah, is yeah, what yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah. But uh, what the fuck was I talking Oh, yes. <laughs> I, I, have, I have a whole theory that mankind went completely bonkers with the invention of photography. That when you could actually see the most accurate representation of yourself, mm -hmm. that drove people crazy. That before that, uh, there was a way you could still, I don't know. You have an uh, ideal just self. Just to literally be able to see yeah. yourself. Yes. Yeah, you could right. idealize things. Yeah. You could do all kinds of manipulate it in a way. Now, you can, now of course, you can manipulate it again. And you yeah. could then too. But it's like, and it wasn't, it's never inaccurate. It's never going to be a completely no. accurate representation no. of you. But I do think that that drove people crazy. So I'm always curious what the fuck it must have been like to be an actor before film and photography. I mean, it must have been really freaky to people. Yeah. If you came out and you played the devil in the Middle Ages, people must have been like, oh, fuck that guy. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's the, the, he's yeah, the, the devil. fucking devil. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that motherfucker's <laughs> actually the devil. Well, also, you know? I think up until the early 1900s, acting was looked upon as a very low... Profession yes. was not plumbing or something. In the, it, was, yeah. it was literally no plumbers were like a they were like, up a that guy has a trade. <laughs> this guy puts on dead people's hair and makeup <laughs> and runs around on stage and says he's Julius Caesar. <laughs> fucking nuts! Like they truly, were not truly. And I think it was seen wow. as like vaguely uh, that idea that you were fucking with people's heads. Yeah. was like, you know, was evil. And for like, you know, in Shakespeare's time, there were Puritans yeah. and or the rise mm -hmm. of kind of Puritans. They were like, this is fucked up. Yeah, you people right. are fucking the, with the, people. The, the you know, there's a they, they had this idea that the the sort of uh, fairies and the uh, various mystical beings would throw this thing on you, which was like a play, and yeah. they called it the glamour. And so it would be like you would be in a reverie of some kind, and then you'd wake up in a field, <laughs> and right. you'd be like, I was in the glamour. And I think there's like an equation between what the actor does and this kind of spiritual that's shamanistic crazy. thing. crazy. So that's like a weird early virtual, yeah, you got yeah, thrown yeah, into right. some fucking virtual reality well, by a bunch of fucking leprechauns. Right. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Which is what DMT does Holy to you now. Holy shit. <laughs> do you want the red By the way, pill do you know or the blue that? pill there? <laughs> because if you take the red pill, you'll wake up in your hey. bed and it'll all be a dream. Hey. But then you take the blue pill hey. and you're going to go down the rabbit hole. <laughs> you're on to something. <laughs> We're onto something here. Well, doesn't Puck say at the end of Midsummer Night's Dream, like, <clears throat> yes, I'm bringing you back into your oh, world. Yeah, yes. You have been right. in this glamour. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry if yeah. we offended you. You're yeah. safe now. Yes. You're yeah, right. we, that, that was him taking you out of the matrix. You yeah. 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 There's a great story that about uh, the guy was doing, this famous actor was doing Dr. Faustus on stage. Uh -huh. And um, he was so convincing, he was so into the role mm -hmm. that he, in the scene where he's supposed to conjure a demon, there was a scene where six demons are supposed to come on stage when he does it, and when he did it, there was one demon too many, oh, is what this writer oh, at the nice. time said, which I've always thought would make oh, a great title for something. Great, yeah. Wow. But that, that he actually conjured a demon, and he stopped acting for a while, this guy. Really? I think his name was Edward Allen. He stopped acting, because he was like, I'm so fucking good. <laughs> <Did> <laughs> what, <I can> conjure, <laughs> yeah. what a great opening it, scene for a film. Yeah, yeah isn't it yeah, great? It's it's like and then my, these six demons. What the? <laughs> yes. Uh, That's exactly it. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> Something showed up on stage. So, I mean, but that, and then that was used as this example of why it was fucked up. Maybe was, some, maybe there's a, a certain level and, and it takes where, where human beings can only process so much information. And when it gets beyond where they can process, that's where you start seeing yes. demons, UFOs, like we can't well, yeah, right. deal or with Mandela what we're looking at or the Mandela. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Apparently when like Paganini would play, he was this amazing, and for his time he would wear these tight pants, and, these, <laughs> and it was just too much for people. And yeah. people would write about like, I saw demons like moving. Oh, that's yeah, right. But he had they a legend, couldn't yeah. deal with. I think that's really yeah. true. I yeah, think yeah. you hit the limit of what you can know. You hit the uncanny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You hit the limit. And for a lot of people, that's pretty close in. It's a yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's yeah, like yeah. for a lot of people, that's not far out. And so yeah. it's like you begin to just go bananas because stuff is inexplicable. Weren't yeah. there reports during Victorian times um, of huge impossible airships and dirt yes. holes. There was oh, yeah. a lot of that. There was a lot of yes. that that people would see 
And then that, it, and then it, in the forties, when people, when the jet age happened, those turned into UFOs. Yes, yes, yes. Still, so we've been seeing mm -hmm. something up there. Yes, and whatever well, it is, and, our brain just makes it whatever yeah. we're and, and also, whatever you right, whatever, whatever explanation you, you can, can deal give with it. it. Yeah, yeah that's what you're right. Looking at. Or it's appearing in that way because it's what knows it's what it knows you can process. Yes. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> Had to go there. <laughs> yes, I did. We'll be right back. <laughs> I've always wanted to say that. And now, more Chinwag. On this past Super Bowl Sunday uh -oh. was day four of every day a UFO being shot down. And being right. it's yeah, the yeah. government going, right. we shot down another UFO. Yeah. Yes. And it didn't trend on Twitter. <laughs> no, I know. It didn't. But they announced the fourth one the day of the Super Bowl. It was well, almost like, have we reached a limit? What yeah. happened? Yeah. Well, I, that, in that case, I think... They they put it in people's minds enough that they were balloons, spy balloons. Yeah, it was just that Chinese to me. I kept saying like, well, now it's so iffy and so, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, to me, it felt much more like a clever way. The whole Chinese balloon thing feels like a cover up for the yes, UAP. a distraction. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, for the UFOs. Oh, for the UFOs. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. You did it again. I know. No, it's... I'm always gonna go there. It's like, yeah. but I that's think great. that that's what I think that that's what it's a cover up. Okay, for. well, I'll play yeah. the skeptic here. What if we're just seeing something that's vague and not clear, and then we're like projecting a pattern onto it? But that's and as a mass species. Well, we're projecting I I, it? I agree. As a mass group, it's harder to explain. But I guess because individual biases can can change, you know, perception easily. But like with Mandela effect, there's all these influences. The memory is glitchy. You thought it was Berenstein, <clears throat> but it was really Berenstein. Mm -hmm. Then, like you said, there's an assumption, well, it should have been that line. And then it spreads. I would just say, well, maybe it's just glitchy memory. Maybe not, a, not a, another universe. Just bad memory. Because it goes into <laughs> a whole other universe to solve our problem with like, Luke, I am your father. It just seems like a long way to go, you know what I mean? <laughs> but that's exactly that thing I always say about the more banal it is, the more I buy it. Yeah. Mm. Actually, like yeah. the psychic stuff, okay. if the more banal a psychic thing is, it's not like I said that I dreamed I got eaten by a crocodile and then I got eaten by a crocodile. <laughs> it's like I dreamed something completely pointless, like the toaster broke and then the toaster broke. And it's like that, that okay. always convinces right. me more. The banality of it is what convinces okay, me. Okay, but what would convince me is if half mm. the population thought JFK was still alive, and the other half well, thought at he this was, point half well, the population maybe, does. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a good point. So, yeah, that's a good so, point. Yeah, yeah, so yeah when I mean, you find like when you read that like QAnon has ten million members, uh, yeah. like we've reached a weird tipping point now, yeah. where it is. It's something. A weird it, it, it also feels like there's this. I also am a big believer in. I do think we have this mass sense of things, just like with electricity, with with forces that are coming that we can't explain. <clears throat> So I, it feels like some catastrophe is coming, and mm -hmm. I'm only saying that because so much of the population is clinging to the most, in, not not just religion, mm -hmm. they are clinging to insane, the infantile, just insanity. infantile yeah. um, fantasy stuff at this point. Yeah, like like there's people like uh, I'm able to fly now, or like <laughs> the, the claims that people are making. Yes. feel like. What a, what a herd starts to do before yeah. uh, the, the lion attacks. Well, it feels, they just go nuts. It feels very like, I mean, it, there's a weird like paradox to it. It's like in the dark ages or what people called it, there was no access to any information. Right. So people were like, I can fly. There's people who have dog heads <laughs> who live down there. And, and you know, oh yeah, sure. I, you know, whatever. Okay. And you know, oh, yeah, people will, there's crazy whatever, you know, planets are doing whatever kind of influence on it. Right. And now, it's the same thing because we're just smothered by too much of it. Yes, yeah, right. So it's I like the weird, like agree inverse with that. thing. There's too much, yeah, I agree. and it's having the same effect. I agree that it's driving people out of their minds, and that's you my can't whole discriminate thing is that it's, anything for no truth. It's just all coming at you, all equally valid. It's on TV. It's you know. Yeah, I, I my my thing about that too is it isn't even necessarily that the amount of it. Mm -hmm. It isn't even necessarily the content. Which is crazy and weird, and there's a yeah. lot of it. It's the speed mm. with which it's hitting oh my people. God. That's what I think is actually the problem. Mm. If we can't process it because it's hitting us all too fast, mm -hmm. yeah. and speed is a really pernicious thing. Like you mm -hmm. just can't keep up. You're yeah. driving you crazy because there's too much coming at you. And and there's no breather. There's no, no like. Mm -hmm. There used to be you'd get the information. Like it was you know Walter Cronkite would do his show, and then Severide would come on after and go, "Here's what this all means." <sighs> yeah. You know, here we're gonna put this together. That's gone. Yeah. It there is, was a monoculture 
that you could, everybody could argue with it, but there was one narrative, like yeah. Cronkite or whatever yeah. it was, yeah. and there were these facts. My students, I, I asked them, and they're just like what you were saying earlier, we're mm -hmm. all living in these little information bubbles. They used to be when they were young, they'd all know the same bands and the same shows. Yeah. They don't even know each other's shows no, or incredible. bands right. or anything. Because there's too many. Yeah. yeah. I, one of the, I, had, I had a weird existential moment where I, I'm, I'm, was, I'm writing something, I'm developing a TV show, but there are so many TV shows on now and they're all so fucking good. It'd be one thing, huh. everyone was like, this early 70s was a golden age of TV. Look, <laughs> no. there was all, like you had All in the Family, yeah. MASH, Mary and Kyler Moore. Oh, okay, you good. just named the three good ones. Yeah. Everything else was crap. But will, do you really think now that it will be looked upon as a different thing? Will yes. People 50 the, years from now look way, back and go, all of this was really good. T TV mm -hmm. right now is the way that movies were in the early 70s where oh. just one after the other amazing visions people are coming doing out. People really Awesome. But I was writing, and in my mind, I'm like, I feel like this has already been done because there's no way to keep up with what is on yes. TV anymore. Yeah, I've, I've, I've yes. heard of there was a there's a comic that I love reading called Paper Girls, and I was like, this would be a great TV oh, yeah. series. Yeah. And then I found out that it was a TV series when they announced they had canceled it. That's when I found out. I didn't even know it was no. a series. I'm like, what the fuck is yeah. happening? No, it's very strange. I remember when there was that show on about like the first man on Mars with Sean Penn, and nobody watched it, nobody heard of it, and I was like, wait a minute, there was a show on the first man on Mars with Sean Penn? Look at Sean Penn. And nobody fucking heard about it yeah. or even watched it. It's crazy. And but and that part of that is just, yeah, the speed with which everything the, is the hitting speed. people. It's too much. I think it's too much. And you're not giving your mind time to yeah. sort your shit out. Yeah, you have to dump it occasionally. Yeah, and there is a generation after my daughter. I, I, my daughter and her friends are very How wired. How old is your daughter? She's 13. Uh-huh. Um, so th unfortunately, they are very wired. But there apparently there's a generation coming up that because every generation rebels against oh, yeah. whatever, that is now this new status is... I have no Instagram. I have yeah, no yeah, yeah. it seems you like the choice. To, yeah. yeah, you have I'm to like and building that, furniture by hand and but, but play, even, play the trombone, just, repair yeah. a player yeah. piano. <laughs> <laughs> I only player pianos. Yeah. Go to the Western <laughs> Union office and get my telegram that I sent Western you. Western Union, but yeah, but like there is this new that will become the new cool status. Is yeah, oh, yeah. No, you not can't have find me stuff. online. That is cool, actually. Yeah, which That'd will be, be which gives me hope. I did this movie with this actress who's very young. So she and her boyfriend came over there in their 20s, and they had neither of them had seen Goodfellas. And Goodfellas, which is a two-hour-plus movie. Yes. Which for them is oh, like, God. oh, my God. And it was so... It made me so happy because that movie feels like it's ten minutes long. It is... Yeah, it they, does. It really the, the does move fast. that film. Yeah. And they, they were just so like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yes. Movies yes. can do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, been, I had that experience really in my Son of the Apocalypse now, the same thing. And I had that moment of going like, wow, it's over already? Yeah, yeah, yeah. what the like, hell? I this thing was a hell of a lot longer than right, this. Right, right. Did he yeah. get drawn into it? Very like much he, so. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, very much so. No, he loved it, and uh, as he should. I was yeah. really yeah. glad, because if he yeah. hadn't, that movie would have been it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, <laughs> you, know, you gotta move out. Yeah, I'm sorry, dude. You're dead to me. You can go for it. You're gone. I'm backing up your shit. I'm clearing out your locker. You're done. You're not playing anymore. So how was Apocalypse now? Suck. <laughs> Han Solo's wearing glasses, and then he drops some folders. I just—that's I, when I shut it off. It's stupid. Yeah. Han Solo wouldn't drop a bunch of folders. <laughs> Forgot he was in it. Yeah, I forgot he was in it. Yeah, well, maybe he wasn't. Deep maybe. Oh, wait, 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 wait a minute. Did you see what I just did there? Is he in there? Oh, see that? Holy so I just shit. flipped it right back yeah. around. <laughs> there's been no detours here at all. We've no, always been on the kind road. Of hard. I well, don't think there's detours. I do like about music now is there's a lot Detour. of music that very openly references other songs, and like they're, they're not, they don't have that anxiety of influence. That the wonderful Harold Bloom. Oh yes, very all. yes indeed. Um, oh, they, so, oh, that's interesting. They very much open. So when if I'm if I'm playing her a song by the band Bleached, which is this great um, punk band from East LA, punk pop band, but they'll mention Sabbath, and I'll go, oh, let me play you something uh -huh. by that's what they're referencing. And, uh -huh. and now, so my daughter loves Bleached. And now she loves Love Black Sabbath. Sabbath. That's cool. Yeah, that's like, true. Oh, that's happened when we yeah, I've seen that happen with my son yeah. too. No, that's actually really good. You're right about that. That it's less kind of coy the way they sort yeah. of bring in in movies too. Those horror the horror movies now are much more just yeah. like I'm making Rosemary's Baby again. <laughs> 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 or it's just like not, not, that doesn't. That's not what the guy's doing. But it's yeah. like it's very much like it's really on the surface there. He's not or, really hiding it. They have characters in the movie that are conversant with pop culture and are. That's why Scream was so revolutionary. The first one. 
all the characters are like, I yeah, know every right, trope. Yeah. So right. Right. And then they still yeah. get killed, which yeah, actually that's awesome. ups the ante. Like, wait a minute, I would be that smart right. in that situation. And yeah, I, right. So I'm still going to get killed? <laughs> right. Why what? is this happening? Yeah, that was, it, th- that's I funny. love that. Yes, that's But you know, I mean. in the music thing, like it used to be that the genre was a way to have your identity. Like, I'm the guy that likes this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But that's changing now because like what you said is there's this kind of open just exchange between genres where the, and my son and our younger people don't even think twice about mixing up hip hop and country. And well, stuff. it's yeah. just, I guess when subculture and niche culture just becomes mainstream culture, you know what I mean? Oh, just yeah, fragments yeah, yeah, yeah. And, oh. You know, mainstream culture yeah. just becomes all that shit. Yeah, yeah. You know I, mean? I it's guess just so. every, every counterculture I mean, will be, be co-opted. Yeah, at one time it used to be like, I, you know, I, I'm really interested in, you know, whatever weird-ass porn, and I could only <laughs> get it because some guy fucking mimeographed it in his house in Indianapolis and stapled <laughs> it up and sent it to him. <laughs> just fucking... <laughs> 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 you know, you had to be like, like, mother. <laughs> you'd be like, I gotta send this guy $12 <laughs> to get my monthly edition. Listen, <laughs> you know then, don't send it to the address on my check. Send it to this <laughs> P.O. And it what's you it cannot like, come to the house. <laughs> exactly. You're just like, how the fuck? Where can I? Do you know where I can find some? You know, and then, and that, and that's gone, which is too bad. Well, now you <laughs> type in I mean, not too words. bad. I mean, maybe it's well, not too yeah. bad. But I mean, there's ways in which it's not too bad. But it's, yeah. but it's also kind of too bad. You know? Yeah. But now you can just open Google. Well, yeah. You know, test fat the thing. none, right. and then uh, everything that you want to look at is going to be right there. <laughs> You have read yes, my well, mind. You did. You just you <laughs> got right know. inside my That's head. Exactly what I was well, talking about. Fat <laughs> out of Indianapolis. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> just stand right, those together need? and pop them in the mail. <laughs> Fat Nun out of Indianapolis. My latest edition yeah. of Fat Nun is here. Well, I, ha- I have the Tashin collected a uh, set of, they, they <laughs> the bound them all. Beautiful, beautiful coffee table books. A lot books, of yeah. commentary. Norman Mailer's uh, commentary is amazing. Um, there was this great documentary about midnight movies, and at the end of it, and they talked to all the, the you know, the Eraserhead and The Harder yeah. They Come and, and Pink Flamingos, and at the end of it, they're talking to John Waters. He said something so fascinating. Yeah. Because John Waters was... The vanguard, the fucking vanguard. Yeah. Yes. When I, I'm, I'm gonna little brag here. When I hosted the Independent Spirit Awards. Oh, hello. Um, it was I hosted hello, hello. it on the fiftieth anniversary of John Waters' first film. I really? Hosted it in 2014, and I was like, I just oh, want to wow. let. And he was in the front row. I was like, just want to let you guys know. When you're all wondering, am I going a little too far? Just know <laughs> that 50 years ago, 18 yeah. year old. John Waters, an openly gay teenager in fucking 60s Baltimore, yeah, yeah. shot a movie called Roman Candles on the roof of his parents' house about an interracial wedding yeah. officiated by a Klansman. Uh-huh. That was his first movie. <laughs> yeah. So he's already Whoa. laid on the barbed wire yeah, for you. Do whatever the wow. fuck you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Wow. But yeah. now, having said that, he has transitioned into America's beloved gay I know. uncle. But that's what's going to happen. Yeah. Be- because yeah. he says in this documentary, he goes, Everything that we did in our movies that got us X ratings, that got us only midnight screenings at the Waverly, yeah. are now throwaway jokes in PG thirteen uh, films. Right, and then they show a, <laughs> yeah, they yeah. show Divine eating a dog turd, and they yep. cut to Austin Powers <laughs> right. drinking this mug of shit. <laughs> it's a bit nutty, like, and everyone's like, ah, ha, ha. like yeah. he's. Yeah. It all gets co-opted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's true. It's impossible to do that kind of thing anymore, is it? Yeah. So it's only more extremity. At what point does it get to like... How far do we go? Okay, now here's a question I think you guys will both be into because the... (laughs) Stop it before I bring up Yeah, let me stop you there. Somebody stop me before I start talking about You guys are big... You guys are into monster films and we were talking about monster films like that we grew up on. We're kind of... There's universal films, but now they're increasingly sadistic. Like there's more and more torture in them. Yeah. Yeah. And like when I grew up, it would be like Dracula and there was the hardly Wolfman. Any blood in the and now they're just yeah. brute. I wouldn't want yeah. to have a kid see. So is there going to be? And now there's like oh, all kinds point. of torture, snuff yeah. films, yeah. you know, yeah. in horror. Like, is it just going to keep going, or is it going to? Well, what's going to happen? I, I, go ahead. No, no, no. I don't know. I mean, I, I think it will probably keep going. I You're like going to be torturing more, babies at some point, and people probably, are going to be shelling yeah, out money at for some that. Point, yeah, I, I, I would think, think it probably at some point. Yeah, I mean, I think that. Uh, <laughs> pop culture, especially horror movies, is a reflection of whoever is the president. So <laughs> when when Nixon was president, all the movies were Parallax View, yes, Rosemary's paranoia, Baby, yeah. Paranoia, everyone's yeah, again. Uh, yeah, even yeah. even the most indie drive-in movies like Let's Scare Jessica to Death and The Texas Chainsaw Massacre yes. are ultimately about. But here, even here Jaws looks at this and normal stuff like that. And oh, yeah. Then, yeah, yeah, and because then post Nixon is 
Jimmy Carter, who is, it's post-Malaise, America's actually looking at itself like, maybe we're not that great. And you got yeah. movies like Rocky, who loses but still keeps his oh, dignity. Yeah. And nice. the Bad News Bears, who lose but still keep their dignity. Uh -huh. oh. And America was just about to face that, and they were uh -huh. like, fuck it. Reagan, Rambo, we win, we win, we right, win, right, we win, yeah, yeah. we win, movies kind of win, 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 right. win, win. Yeah, yeah. the horror movies. And the horror movies in the 80s were whoever's having sex and being deviant, it's they true. get murdered. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. whoever's survive. like, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's it. That's true. Yeah, that's and, a really good point. And then point. Um, Clinton came along, and it was all post-ironic, all self-referential. Right. Uh -huh. But, you know, everything's cool, everything's uh -huh. okay. Uh -huh. And then when, when W came in, that's when the torture porn came in. Uh, and the 24 and, and, yeah, and, and yeah. Saw right. and Hostel. Yeah. And then Obama comes in. It's all superheroes coming out of the sky and oh, fixing everything. No. America was like, here's this superhero. Oh. Yeah. And, and now that Trump is in office, then Trump got into office, and it's what did it became. Reality isn't real anymore. What's uh -huh. reality? Uh -huh. Everything mm. is up for grabs, uh -huh. and it's all about shifting stuff. And, so I don't, And Biden? Yeah, um, where are we at now? Biden is, uh, it's <laughs> movies about just cruising around in a car and having, having, it easy. Malted, Come on, having a nice malted sure. and just Kid, talking what's about... What's amazing is to realize how, ta not tame, but how uh, not graphic Texas Chainsaw Massacre is. I, and to realize that in fact, I mean that's no a Mandela minute. effect in, yeah. in some yeah. ways, because you remember that movie that being yeah. incredibly violent, it, incredibly this is bloody. This the most graphic, it, yeah. there's nothing. nothing. There's nothing. nothing. Yeah. Now, I, here's what's weird. My daughter, who's really into horror movies and all her kids, all her friends watch them, she goes, can we, can we, I, all my friends have seen Halloween. I want to watch the original Halloween. So I watched it again. Mm. Halloween, like Texas, no blood. Nothing. No nothing. It's nothing. all, because John Carpenter was a brilliant, he knew how to do the old Hitchcock effects yeah. where yep. you imply stuff. Imply yep. stuff yeah. and, and I watched her with her and she was like, these people, why don't they just call the police? Yeah, so so the guy's just standing in the backyard. He's <laughs> yeah. right there. Yeah, yeah, no, so right in daylight, like, call the fucking <laughs> it's police. It's very stupid. Um, and same with Texas Chainsaw. There's that weird, and, and also well, what's, yeah. what's interesting about horror movies now, there's this weird backlash of now the people of color and women and gay people who were always the disposable people mm. in those they're movies the, are the now making now. the movies. Yes. They're and making the and, movies and they're generally also the people who try them. And, and, exactly. yeah. and they're yeah. looking at, okay, what does that mean now? What does that... Mm -hmm. So if That's you watch, you know, like X and Pearl and um, Barbarian, Barbarian and, yeah. or just Barbarian, yeah. let's yeah. look at this from a different angle and let's, let's see where the real horror is coming from. Maybe it's not... The weird masked maniac, or the you know maybe yes. it's the people in authority that we think are yes. in control yeah, that are actually right. doing stuff, which is more like the '70s ones yeah. too. Back to yeah. the kind of '70s, the paranoia ones that There's you can't a, trust anybody. He talked about the Mandela effect. There's a line, and because I remember growing up watching Halloween, going, I'm "Just telling you, Alice." This is gonna be the scariest fucking thing I've ever seen. This thing fucked me yeah. up. And then she's just like, I totally don't bored by people. it. But there's one <laughs> line that I don't think they. Re I realize how funny it is when they come. <laughs> they, um, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis and her friend, they're smoking weed in the Camaro, listening to Blue Oyster Cult. And they pull up to the <laughs> hardware store where the girl's uh, dad is the sheriff, and they're like. What, Dad, was there a break in the oh, yeah. hardware store? And he goes, oh, yeah, someone just stole some rubber masks, some knives, some rope, probably some teenagers That's trying right. to prank. Yeah. It was just like, and, and my daughter went, so sure, dude. Yeah. 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 yeah, Someone stole a murder kit on yeah. Halloween. Yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah, yeah, think yeah. it's anything. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. it's so fucking funny. Yeah, I'll give it in when defense. It shit. wasn't a murder kit then. Yeah. That no, was it wasn't a murder kit. Yeah. No, yeah. That's exactly yeah. right. Because we, the, we yeah, wouldn't go there. No, we didn't know it yet. We didn't know it Oh, my God, that's right. We didn't have all the cliches in place. Yet. Back then, the killer was this boogeyman in a mask. It wasn't the normal looking. Right. Well, I yeah. wonder uh, what did we learn during this oh, yeah. shit? <laughs> yes, <now laughs> what, what, what did we What did we learn? Pat? What came to light? Where, where um, did we go? What special um, special lessons do we draw from uh, this? I, I, I agree with your uh, assessment of uh, it's all detours. This was all uh, detours. Yeah, it's all it's detours. Amazing. I think it was, it was your really assessment. Fun. I don't know. I think it was maybe yours. You, well, but you said I'm going to take another detour. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, my God. Is that like at the end of a, there's no detours on the chinwag? Matter of fact, it's all detours. <laughs> oh, I like that. Oh, I like that very much. Yeah. Thank you for that. I think that's very good. Yeah. Thanks for doing this. Really yeah. Guys, you, that this was a real was pleasure. Amazing. That was a real pleasure. Well, as promised, a dandy outing with Pat Oswald, wasn't it? It was good he was, times. He was fantastic. So he funny. was really fantastic. It was yeah. almost his mind, his brain moved so fast. It was hard to keep up with it. <laughs> He was, was exhausting. A, he was. He was kind of exhausting. He really, a lot of energy, that cat. Um, now, 
you heard us discussing this this mystery of the universe, the Mandela effect, and it is indeed baffling and puzzling. But as promised, now we would like to read you a comment from one of our listeners, fellow main fellow named Todd. He'll only Todd. He'll only go by Todd. He won't tell us <laughs> anything more about himself. Maybe that maybe that's very it. mysterious. Maybe, he, maybe he's just Todd. Maybe that's <laughs> he's it. Just Todd. Todd wrote us. Todd wrote us a um, a comment, and. Uh, he, he, he offers up an explanation for the Mandela effect. Steve, would you like to read that? Yeah, I'll read it. We, if you've listened to the episode, you'll know that we'd had all kinds of explanations, including alternative universes, multiverses. Well, we, had, we had theories, yeah, Steve. we had <laughs> theories. <laughs> right, theories. Maybe not explanations. <laughs> yeah, theories. Todd here also offers a theory of a more sort of humble nature, but still compelling. He says, quote, loving the show, stream of consciousness at its finest. I appreciate that Todd's <laughs> getting the show. <laughs> Yes, and then he, he says, uh, I wasn't sure if you were aware, but there is a plausible explanation for the Mandela effect. He says, in 1987, the movie Cry Freedom was released, starring Denzel Washington as Steve Biko, a black apartheid activist who died in prison in 1977. Mm -hmm. The timing of the release of the movie coincides with the first recollections of the Mandela effect. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think, this is Todd anyway, uh, and he says, worth thinking about. So what do you think about Todd's theory? So the theory basically is that it was a mistake because it was a sort of South African freedom fighter died in prison. And yeah, Steve Biko. That must have been, yep, who was an amazing guy. and he was. Um, amazing, and as was Nelson Mandela. So that there's, a, there's confusion happening. Yeah. Which, you know, I suppose is in that specific case seems plausible. But, it, but to me, Steve, it, it begs the question. Is my using beg the question right? You got to tell me if I use beg the question right. Because I beg the question is a phrase that's always confusing to me. Because yeah, it's like a logical what actually, fallacy. What it actually means, though, is it raises the question, y I think. That's what you're using it to mean, raises the question. But the logical fallacy is that you're assuming the thing you're supposed to be proving. So it's a little more technical. Holy and you're fuck. sort of right in between there, man. <laughs> Holy cow. All right. I well, got to let uh, you go on with this. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So it raises the question of yes. did it not, did the idea of this kind of mass collective delusional hiccup in the in the space-time continuum thing not exist before this where you know what i mean well so it's like i think he thinks it just, it just gives a name to it it yeah. gives a name to it but did it but did is that really the start of it he i don't know whether his timing is right but i think what he's basically saying is like it isn't a thing it's like this is what things happen that get confused together and so people confused Biko and Mandela. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Biko died, so that's why there's all this confusion, but it isn't uh -huh. really a thing, the Mandela you think, effect. You think Todd, uh, I guess so. I guess he is That's how I'm reading Todd. It's just it confusion. And so all of these things are potentially just kind of, yeah. you're just You'd have confused. to do a similar, I mean, here's my theory, because after we talked to Patton, uh, I've thought about it more, and I, I, this is. let me lay this on you and see what you think of it. I think the memory is so um, active. It's not a passive receiver of information. Mm -hmm. It goes out and constructs reality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So here's my th new theory. What if the Mandela effect is actually a case of false memory mm -hmm. creation mm -hmm. in just as you're telling your friend about the Mandela effect, you are actually creating mm -hmm. a Mandela effect. Because mm -hmm. you're like, remember that guy? He didn't have a monocle who was the Monopoly right. guy. And then yeah, right. I'm, I'm like, I only had a vague sense of who the Monopoly guy was. No, but it's now incredible. I'm no, adding I, it. I think that's a really cool way of thinking of memory, that it's not just a recording device. It's actually an active entity. Yeah. That's receiving stuff and changing stuff and and fucking with stuff. I mean, yeah. I, I think so. You know, um, definitely. I've I've said this to you like, and I, I think I said this the other day. I notice increasingly this sense as I get older, and I'm like, I don't know whether it's that I'm losing my mind, <laughs> that I'm more apt to if somebody says to me, "Oh, sure, you remember that time we." You know, the, the alligator, the alligator was <laughs> the running alligator. across the highway and went after the car. And I'm like, uh, yeah, maybe I do remember that. And it's like, you, <laughs> you know, want to remember it. <laughs> yeah. And it's sort of like, ah, yes, maybe I do, because it's, you know, and I was saying, and so I agree with you with that idea that memory isn't like a static thing where you just it's not just you just drop the thing in there and it just pops out. For, you know, fresh and clean every time yeah. you take it out. And it's right. like that it's actually kind of like 
gets all mixed up in your imagination and your and everything else. That's really then, cool. Then you think it's like a, a bigger metaphysical phenomenon, but it's like it really is just how fast the memory can rearrange. Like yeah. if you ask me, I play my guitar every day. If you said to me, Steve, you know, I like the ivory inlay at the back of your guitar, I'd be like, you know, I like that too. I have no fucking you idea if there's an ivory inlay at the back of my guitar. You don't even know if there is one. I don't even wow. know. Exactly. No. no, I know. And that's what yeah. I mean. That's exactly the thing I'm talking yeah. about. And it's a weird thing. I don't know. It's like my 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 girlfriend has a whole theory that our memories are being really fucked with by social media, by all the sort oh. of like – and that it's affecting our totally. memories and that it's like, and that maybe there's not only is it fudging our memories and we can't remember stuff because this is, we're in this miasma, this fucking fog yeah. of shit of everybody's TikTok shit and everything going on at the same time. But maybe it's actually even sort of making us quicker to go like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. sure. Yeah. To just agree. You know what I mean? Yes. Go, right. Yeah. 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 I, I know what that is. Cause it's like, it's really strange. Yeah, I watched an AI, my son was showing me an AI debate between Trump and Biden. And the whole thing was being created by AI bots. And they mm -hmm. had like, you know, like fake images of them moving their mouths and moving around. And the voices were completely realistic. Mm -hmm. And I believe that if we, in, like, if we are like ingesting a ton of this stuff, our memories are going to be like- Memories are going to be really unreliable. screwed up. I mean, yeah. I'm amazed at how often now my go-to is something's fake. If yeah. I look at a picture, I'm like, is that real? Is that fake? That, is yeah. that a fake one or a real one? That's got to mess with our memories. That's got to mess with our yeah. own sense of like, did that happen to me? Did I actually have that? Which I suppose at bottom is the Mandela effect in a, in a, in a big way, I suppose. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, I don't want to rule it out entirely. Maybe there is some slippage between universes, but, uh, but, it, but I do think the memory is much weirder than we think it is. That would be my. Yeah, for sure. My you know, I think a future, an interesting topic for a future episode, it's a little different, but it's the same, but I'm just thinking of it would be mass delusion, mass panics, mass, yes. you know, the Havana syndrome, yes, things like that. Like those kinds of those sort of strange panics you hear about, like sort of school kids all fainting and, you know, oh, yeah. at, a, at a school somewhere. Everybody and, getting sort of similar kind of tics, uh, verbal yeah. tics together yeah, and, and body. And my favorite, the my favorite of all, the mad gasser of Mattoon. <laughs> Which is, which, you know, I, I got you to read it. I would love to talk yes. about the Matt. We just, need to just do an to, episode. Just to tease you guys with the Matt <laughs> Gasser, Gasser of Mattoon. Because that's a great, but it's a great example of a, of a mass, uh, of mass panic. Don't, don't say too of, much about it, man. No, I just shouldn't. Just leave and, it hanging there. Yeah, dangling. okay, man. All right. And possibly it's real. Possibly it wasn't a mass delusion. Anyway, this is all food for thought, <laughs> friends. This is all for something for you to chew over during your uh, Fourth of July celebration. So everybody else is sitting there enjoying their hot dogs and apple pie. You could be sitting there wondering if it's all real. Muttering to yourself in a corner. Yes. yes. Is this really happening? Anyway, thank you. And as always, uh, head off to uh, head off to Apple Podcasts. Apple give Podcasts. us ratings. Give us reviews. Yeah. Give us uh, your letters and your comments. We really enjoy them. Indeed. Happy holidays uh, from us here at uh, Chinwag. Uh, Chinwag out. Chinwag is a production of Treefort Media and Touchy Feely Films, hosted and executive produced by Paul Giamatti and Stephen Asma. Executive producers for Treefort are Kelly Garner and Lisa Ammerman. Dan Carey is executive producer for Touchy Feely. Our series producer is Rachel Whitley Bernstein. Our associate producer is Andrew Miller. Original theme music by Luke Topp, with additional music by Via Mardo. Oscar Guido is our executive in charge of production. Tom Monahan is head of audio for Treefort. Animation created by Alex Sokol. Audio production, supervision, and editing by Maxwell Carney. Additional audio assistance and mixing by Jeff Neal. Video editing by Brian Barcheski. With additional production management from Renee Levesque. Clara Wong is Celestial Empress of Benevolent Knowledge. Lastly, for more information, go to chinwagpod.fm and find us on Instagram or TikTok at chinwagpod or on Twitter at chinwag underscore pod.